Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Rani Radhakrishnan, a pathologist by training and a hematologist by choice. This is the continuation of our series in which we are going to see case studies to demonstrate the importance of looking at scatter plots, histograms and cytograms in cell counters that generate this data in a hematology laboratory. I firmly believe that what the mind does not know, the eyes do not see. Therefore, we need to look carefully at these pictures that are generated by our cell counters, which are present today in all the laboratories across the country and beyond. In my series titled The Scatter Matters, where the picture tells you a definitive story, today we will talk about microcytic hypochromic anemia, which in any laboratory is one of the most common slides or most common case that we would encounter. So without much ado, let me go to the case like to stress once more on the erythrograms that we see on the Siemens Advia 2120i and today we will discuss examples based on this erythrogram. In my previous video I had elaborated on this particular scatter plot which is of the red cells where the volume of the red cell is plotted against the hemoglobin concentration and you get a scatter of normocytic normochromic cells. And depending upon the position of the scatter, you will be able to find out the presence of macrocytes, the presence of microcytes, the presence of hypochromic cells, and the presence of hyperchromic cells. This corroborates with the histograms that are also generated, where you have a volume histogram, and this is the normal volume, which means that the patient that the patient will have a normal MCV. And this histogram can either shift to the left or to the right. Similarly, based upon the hemoglobin concentration, this is the normal one, and it can shift to the left or the right. So this is what we are going to base our interpretation of the erythrograms or interpretation of the scatter plots in the next few examples. And I will keep coming back to the presence of this normal scatter in all the sa uh, samples that we are going to see. So I would request you not to look at the numbers for now. Let's just focus on primarily the erythrogram and the two RPC histograms that we can see over here. So what I've put in yellow here is the normal. So this is the normal MCV or the RBC volume histogram. And you can see that the histogram is shifted to the left, which means that the cells are microcytic. Similarly, this is the normochromic red cell and a shift to the left means that there is hypochromasia. So you have microcytosis and you have hypochromasia. Fair enough. Now this is the normocytic, normochromic red cell scatter. The scatter that we are getting from our sample has shifted to the left and downwards. And we know that you have hypochromasia this side and microcytosis down below here. So you have a good population of microcytic cells and cells that are also hypochromic. So the scatter tells you that we are dealing with a microcytic hypochromic anemia, which is corroborated by the histogram. Now we get numerical differentials of red cells, where you find that the percentage hypo is about 56% and the percentage of microcytic red cells is 53%. So this again fits in with what we are seeing on the picture. You have a microcytic hypochromic ratio 
of 0.9. Now, when you look at these values which are very familiar to us, you have a low RBC count of 2.57, a hemoglobin of 4.4, a hematocrit which is low, and 60.4 MCV, an MCH that is low, and an MCHC that is low, an RDW that is higher than normal. Now, this fits in with a microcytic hypochromic anemia that is most probably iron deficiency. So, without looking at these numbers first, we looked at these pictures. We arrived at a diagnosis. We, we correlated that with the RBC differential that we found and finally looked at the CBC parameters and reached or rather confirmed our diagnosis of an iron deficiency anemia. We'll look at another example. Where again, you see here the histogram, the volume histogram is shifted to the left. The chromasia histogram is shifted to the left. So, you have a microcytic hypochromic red cells. If you see your scatter plot, which should have actually been here, is shifted again to the left and below, which again shows that there are microcytic hypochromic red cells. If we look at our differential, RBC differential, you have 71% of hypochromic cells and 26% of microcytic cells, which gives you an M by H ratio of 0.3. And if you look at your CBC, you will find that the MCV is 66, MCH is 17.4 and the RDW is 16.6. Now again, confirming that this is another example of iron deficiency anemia. So, this numbers is only adding up to what we are seeing as part of the scatter plots and the histograms that is generated by our cell counter. So, we have in effect established a diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia by just looking at these pictures. Of course, you have to look at the numbers. I'm not telling you to not to look at the numbers, but you first focus on these parameters and then look at the numerical values. Now we go on further. So this was iron deficiency anemia. Now we look at another example. This is your normal of RBC volume. It's a very mild sh shift to left. Again, as far as hypochromasia, again, the shift is very mild. The RBC erythrogram or the RBC scatter plot is shifted slightly from the normal. It is shifted slightly to the left and slightly downwards. It is not in the occupying the center of the grid, which would mean that majority of the cells are normocytic, normochromic. If you look at the differential, there's very little hypochromasia. And there is very little hypochromasia here and most of it is microcytosis, which is about 20%. Now, we'll look at the numbers. The RBC count is high. The MCV is slightly low, 67%. MCH is slightly low, 21%. And the MCHC is 32.4. Then RDW, which is about 13. Now, this is not iron deficiency. Because you don't see that much of microcytic and hypochromasia. You don't see that much of hypochromasia. We see a fair bit of microcytosis over here. And if you look at the M by H ratio, it is 2.7. So this correlates with a beta thalassemia trait. Now, what differentiates apart from the presence of the uh, scatter plot? The M by H ratio also plays an important role here and we see that anything that is below 0.9 is iron deficiency anemia and anything that is above 1.2 is in favor of a beta thal trait and something in between is probably a, a condition where both beta thal trait and iron deficiency anemia can coexist in the same patient. The next example, again, there is 
a shift to the left. So there is microcytosis. There is a fair bit of hypochromasia also. And this is the normal scatter of the red cell. There is a shift to the left and there is a shift to the, uh, to the lower part. So which means that it shifted down and shifted to the left. There is microcytosis. There is hypochromasia. So there is microcytosis. There is hypochromasia as is evidenced by both the histogram and the scatter plot. You can see that the scatter is nicely shifted here. What is the M by H? So there is a microcytic hypochromic anemia. Is it truly iron deficiency or is it a combination of iron deficiency and beta thalassemia trait? So the M by H ratio here is about 1.2. And if you look at the RBC differentials, the hypo is 61% and the microcytosis is 79%. The CBC the hemo RBC count is 4.7, which is slightly high. The hemoglobin is 6.2 and the MCV is 52 with an MCH of 13 and an RDW of 18.7. So if you correlate all this, you can think of a iron deficiency anemia, which is coexistent with a beta thalassemia trait which is again another common condition that is seen in our country, uh, knowing the prevalence of iron deficiency in India. So here the MYH ratio will play a part as also the differentiation of iron deficiency from beta thalassemia trait. So this is iron deficiency anemia with associated beta thal trait. Now, if we look at the scatter side by side, this is the normal, okay? So, now you'll have seen, uh, seen this erythrogram so many times that you know that the normal sits here. In iron deficiency anemia, it goes to the left and it goes below. Whereas in beta thalassemia trait, <clears throat> we have what is called a comma sign where <clears throat> it is nicely curved and you find the hypochromasia and the microcytosis which is present. So the scatter of iron deficiency is different from the scatter of beta thalassemia trait. So you can, when you keep on looking at these pictures, you will be able to note the subtle differences and you will be able to diagnose uh, and differentiate an iron deficiency anemia from a beta thalassemia trait which are the two most common differences, uh, differentials of microcytic hypochromic anemia. Now, patients who have been diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia either receive replacement therapy either in the form of, you know, iron or they could be given transfusions if the hemoglobin is very low. What happens to the histograms in such conditions? So, you will have cells which are normal, you will have cells which are microcytic, you will have cells which are normochromic and you will have the patient's cells which are hypochromic. So you will get a histogram which is biphasic. So you will have a bicytopenic kind of picture and if you look at the scatter plot also, you will have the normal population, normocytic, normochromic cells which could be either secondary to transfusion or secondary to receiving replacement therapy and therefore the cells becoming, uh, you know, there is adequate hemoglobin production and therefore you get normocytic normochromic cells. So this is that population and you have the patient's original population which was microcytic hypochromic. So when you see a dual population, it is some kind of a dimorphic anemia and it correlates very well with the histograms. So this will immediately alert you to the presence of two populations in the smear which you are going to review. One population being normocytic, normochromic and the other population being microcytic and hypochromic. So these scatter plots will tell us a lot of information about what one is going to see on the peripheral smear. 
We're not taking away examination of the peripheral blood film because that is the gold standard. But you, when you look at these scatter plots, it gives you a better focus to know what you're supposed to look for in this slide so that you will be able to pick up the pathology faster and better and therefore you know your turnaround times can be improved your interpretations can be improved and therefore we you know doing better patient care so in summation the histograms and the scatter plots can be used effectively to diagnose microcytic hypochromic anemias the numerical values do not bring out the complete picture and the peripheral blood film of course i said is confirmatory or is the gold standard so we need to look at smears where it is necessary and we need to look at scatter plots in all cases so that we can bring down the review of the blood film and thereby enabling the pathologist to focus more on smears that require more attention and that require better interpretation. The message that I want to convey is that we need to think visual. We don't have to think numbers all the time. We need to start thinking visually. We need to start looking at the pictures. We need to look at histograms. We need to look at scatter plots. And we need to look at the erythros erythrograms. We, using this, we can make diagnosis of hematological disorders more fun, more enjoyable. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. And you can look forward to more such videos and more such cases. Thank you.